Have you ever been reviewing a speaker and it totally surprised you when you stopped listening to it? Well, that happened with this review. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, maybe out of your cheap Audio Man coffee mug. And let's talk about the Acoustic Energy AE300. So this is the Acoustic Energy AE300. It's a two-way speaker with a five-inch woofer and a one-inch tweeter rear ported on the back. Comes in a beautiful real wood veneer finish with some curvy edges on there. I didn't even peel off the sticker on this one. Yeah, let's do that together. Ready? Hold on. I don't want to ruin it for you. So satisfying. So the fine folks over at Fidelity Imports sent this over to me for review. They had also sent me the AE100, which I liked. I think the Mark II, AE100 Mark II. Maybe it's the Mark III. Maybe it's the Mark I, I don't remember. I do remember though that it was a good speaker. And this speaker is very similar to that speaker, but improved pretty much every category. <laughs> Want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Ridge. I have a story about Ridge. I've been using this awesome Ridge wallet for about a week now. Prior to that, I was using, I believe their titanium wallet and I love it. I used to use a huge wallet. I never knew how I was gonna feel about these little wallets. Turns out that it's awesome. I have four cards in here, but this thing can actually accommodate up to 12 cards. But anyway, my story, at my daughter's graduation, I pull out my Ridge wallet to pay, very expensive meal, and her great uncle looks at me and says, that is the coolest wallet I've ever seen. So we actually started talking about Ridge. I told him about Ridge sponsoring my channel, that I had more wallets at home, and it finally dawned on me, just give him the wallet. So I gave him my titanium Ridge wallet, and you could not slap the smile off his face. It was amazing just how much a little brilliantly designed, hugely cool to look at wallet could elicit such an emotional response from somebody, but it's true. I've been using the carbon fiber wallet, the carbon fiber key case, which I love. All of these things are built really well. And the carbon fiber pocket knife. Now I love the titanium, but there's something really awesome about the carbon fiber. It's kind of like a matte finish on a nice pair of veneered speakers. There's some texture to it. It's obviously light. And I didn't know how I was gonna like the carbon fiber, but it turns out I love the carbon fiber to the point where I'm now using the carbon fiber daily for my daily carry. Father's Day is just coming up. Run on over to ridge.com slash cheap audio man and you can bundle a bunch of products together and get up to 40% off. If you don't love it, you can return it. These are quality products that Ridge stands behind. It was so interesting that my Ridge wallet created such a cool conversation and a cool experience where I could, it, he was so happy that I gave him this wallet. It was amazing. These Ridge wallets are so cool and they have RFID blocking technology so that people don't rip off your credit card numbers anymore because there's a bunch of thieves out there. So go to ridge.com slash cheap audio man, get up to 40% off when you bundle a bunch of awesome products together. Thank you, Ridge. So first it comes in three different finishes. It comes in walnut veneer, real walnut veneer, not fake walnut, not Himalayan swine bark, <laughs> real walnut veneer. It also comes in white piano gloss and piano gloss black. I felt like I said that wrong. Piano gloss white or white piano gloss. Anyway, comes in really shiny white or really shiny black or my favorite walnut veneer. Has a frequency response of 45 all the way down to 45 on the bottom end. 45 hertz on a five inch woofer on a two-way speaker that's this size sounds a little bit optimistic but there's a reason for that optimism goes all the way up to 30 kilohertz has a fairly low sensitivity of 86 db crossover frequency is at 2.8 kilohertz which is good i like it when the crossover point is either low 
or high. I don't like it around 1500 hertz. 2800 is pretty good. Six ohm nominal impedance. It's got a redesigned woofer and a redesigned tweeter for the 300 series. If you want to know more, I'll link it in the description. You can check it out, but it's, you know, better. Cones and sandwiches and all sorts of motor structures, all better. Does that make a difference sonically? Maybe. The partnering equipment I had with the Acoustic Energy AE300 was the Emotiva RMC1L. It's a surround theater, surround theater. It's a home theater surround processor, but it's a very capable preamp as well. It's got a great DAC in it, does fully balanced. Anyway, I had the Emotiva fully balanced CD player going into the RMC1L, going out of there into the LA90 Discrete from Topping, which is I think about 50 to 90 watts, depending upon the impedance. I definitely had 50 clean watts going into these things from probably one of the best amplifiers I've heard. For source, I had either the Emotiva CD player or I had an Apple TV running Amazon Music going into the RMC1L using its DAC and then out into the, uh, into the topping, into the speakers. Let's talk about bass. You know, the funny thing about this is I did all my uh, notes yesterday and I was talking to one of my patrons while I'm listening to it because I've had these up for like a month doing home theater TV duty because I can learn a lot about a speaker watching movies and watching TV. Anyway, I didn't even write down bass on my notes. And that's really important because the bass on this speaker is the standout sonic characteristic. I could not believe the amount of bass coming out of this speaker. I couldn't believe it. I had it in my living room. My living room's big. It's got like 20 foot, maybe 25 foot. I have no idea, but they're getting ready to repaint the ceiling. I may have them put the smoke detector back up there. It's been missing since we've lived here for 10 years because I can't get to it, but they got to build a scaffolding to paint the, paint the ceiling. Anyway, bass is so powerful. I'm going to leave that till the final thoughts, but just take this into consideration. Bass is absolutely stupid. <laughs> There's so much of it on this speaker. It's frankly amazing. Let's talk about soundstage and image. So your room's gonna play a pretty significant role in the soundstage and imaging of a speaker. If you have similar distances to the sidewalls and you have a fairly rectangular shaped room, you're probably gonna get great soundstage and imaging from just about any speaker, depending upon where you have it from the back wall. I'll say this about this speaker, soundstage and imaging, it's good, it's great even, with the exception of vertical off-axis imaging. So basically, once your ear gets either above or below the tweeter level, you will hear a significant fall off in the amount of treble or the top end clarity of the music. When I got my ear above tweeter level, pretty big fall off on the top end clarity. Didn't sound bad per se, It's it was just that when I brought my head down and these are small speakers, right? I have them on the isoacoustic stands. But if you get these speakers, which you probably should, if you get these speakers, you want to make sure you get them on a stand that is going to get the tweeter at ear level or even above ear level. It didn't have the clarity that I wanted or craved or desired. Trouble quantity dropped off pretty significantly when my ear was above tweeter level. Now let's talk about mid -range. God's gonna cut you down by Johnny Cash. His voice is already very baritone-y. So even on a thin speaker, even on a speaker that doesn't have a lot of warmth, his voice is still full and thick. And man, when I pumped him through the AE300s, it was like it was syrupy and yummy and thick and engaging, almost emotional. Male vocals are thick and rich, like rich mahogany. Like le finely tanned, new newly tanned leather. Full grain. None of that bonded crap. Redemption song by Bob Marley. The acoustic guitars were, there wasn't as much reverb on the acoustic guitars. His voice sounded great. Lacked a bit of that finite detail that I've heard on other speakers. Female vocals aren't going to sound as natural as engaging on this speaker, but I'm, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Hello by Adele sounded great, but it was more of a smoky, rich, 
haunting presentation of the music versus like a clinical reproduction of the reverb and everything like that. Midrange is a little bit veiled. Not saying that's a bad thing. It's actually could be considered a bit of a good thing. Let's talk about treble. Zero sibilance on this speaker. So that's really in the four to eight K range when it comes to treble. So if you hear a and it on a lot of music and once you hear it, you can't really unhear it. Some speakers are really bad at that. Some recordings are bad at that. One of the worst recordings I've heard for sibilance is Uninvited by Alanis Morissette, the MTV Unplugged version. From the 14 to 18 seconds on Uninvited, it is crazy sibilant, the way that's recorded. A speaker that has good treble will be sibilant. A speaker that has spicy treble will be almost unlistenable. And a speaker that has a little bit more relaxed treble is going to be better for that song. This speaker probably handled that song the best out of any speaker that I've heard when it comes to sibilance. So that tells me the treble kind of rolls off on the top. Very similar, well, I'll get into that in the final thoughts. Scentless Apprentice, scentless, see, I'm sibilance. It's very sibilant when I say scentless apprentice. Anyway, Scentless Apprentice by Nirvana. Off of the In Utero album. Great. Actually, I think, do I have that poster up there? I do, but you can't see it. Right there. It's out of focus because of my fancy camera. Anyway, that song is awesome. But it can be a bit intense. When you're listening to it through a very revealing system. It was just as engaging as when I'm listening to it through a really clinical system. But in a completely different way. If I had to say anything about treble, it's rolled off. It's natural. Symbols sound like symbols. Percussion attacks sound like percussion attacks. It's just further back in the mix. Back and to the left. So this is all going to make sense. If you just stay with me. What are my final thoughts? So let me set the table on this. Frame this up for you. I had these little speakers in a giant room in my living room. And I like to listen to little speakers in a giant room because it gives me, well, it tells me just how much gumption they had. And if I had to describe this speaker in one way, it'd be gumption. The amount of bass on the speaker for its size is almost stupid. It's almost unbelievable. And this would be a fun speaker to put next to some tower speakers and then like fake your friends out to say which speaker is playing. I listened to a ton of 72 Seasons by Metallica. It's their new latest record. And it, it's almost, okay, that record's like a love letter to Metallica fans. It's almost like fan service. And I love it because it's awesome. Anyway, it's a slam fest. I mean, just an utter, like, it's recorded very similarly to the way the Black Album was recorded, which is really punchy on the bottom. And I mean, it is just a, it's like getting slapped in the face with like a tuna, maybe a tarpon, and a large fish. Large fish, just like getting slapped in the large fish. So the whole record, I was just transfixed. I just kept listening to one track, to the next track, to the next track. But I was having such a good time. I'm like, wait a minute. I've actually got to listen to some of my test track songs. So I turned it to Corn, Throw Me Away off the MTV Unplugged record. At the beginning of that song, there's some Japanese taiko drums. Sounded like they were in the room. There's a lack, a little bit lack of clarity on the initial hits. But it was so enveloping, so big. Again, I was blown away because the speaker is muy pequeño, small. Eulogy by Korn. The electric guitars, there's like, I was feeling the bass in my chest and I did not have a subwoofer hooked up. No subwoofer. I can't say enough about how much bass this thing pumps out. It's really amazing. But with all that bass, you are sacrificing. You can't have everything. You cannot have everything in a speaker. And it's funny because I'll hear in the comments sometimes, hey, I want a speaker that's got a ton of bass, punchy bass, clean, clear, believable mids, and really sparkly highs that have great extension. Like, you can't have that. Maybe if you've got like a really well blended in subwoofer. Anyway, on a speaker that comes in around $1,000, you just don't get that. There's going to be sacrifices. And the sacrifice here is in mid-range clarity. At times it feels a little bit veiled. But just because it's veiled doesn't mean it's not a great speaker. Actually, a lot of music, even poorly recorded music, is going to sound great on these speakers. 
if you're looking for the utmost and mid-range and top-end clarity, this speaker is probably not going to give it to you, and you might want to look elsewhere. However, if you want a speaker that's easy to listen to, begs you to turn it up, because I just kept wanting to turn this thing up. I was listening to the speaker in my living room 10 feet away, easily into the 80s, and it was completely holding itself together. An 80 dB, to some people, they're going to say, that's not very loud. Trust me, go actually play something at 80 dB and then 80 dB. That sounds weird. And then try to have a conversation with somebody. It's not very easy to do that. So at the beginning of the video, I talked about how this speaker, how this speaker affected me when I took it down because I was comparing it to another speaker. Very similar price, very similar size, but they sounded very different. And both of them have their pros and their cons. I don't wanna ruin it because I'm gonna do a speaker shootout with that other speaker. But there are certain things that I thought I liked better, better about speaker B. When I put speaker B back up to run TV and home theater duty, I kept listening to music and I missed the acoustic energies. If you're just listening to music through these, this is an absolutely engaging, almost addictive and indulgent sound. It's like having dessert before dinner. And then when you eat dinner, you're like, I like the dessert better. It reminds me of the first generation Andrew Jones, the ELAC, the debut series. It also reminds me of the PSB Imagine XBs, both speakers of which I love. I think it's more composed and actually has better top end than the debut series from Andrew Jones. Now that speaker is a lot more affordable. So this is a thousand dollar speaker. I wish it was, I wish it was $250 less. I wish it was 750. I think a thousand dollars is pushing it a little bit with this speaker. I get it though. I truly get it. Even in a large room, this speaker is going to surprise you. In a medium room, you don't need any more. You don't need towers. Legitimately, you don't need, I don't think you need towers in a large room. I don't, I never felt like I needed towers, but it's one of those speakers that you're not going to understand it until you actually hear it and you actually feel it. But this is a speaker that I could definitely live with. Now, it wouldn't be my only pair of speakers. I would want to switch it out with some other speakers every now and again that had a different sound signature. But the Acoustic Energy AE300 punch way above its size. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook. You can also use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links, although I don't think these are going to be an affiliate link. You can also sign up for Tidal, Amazon Music, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. You can also use the thanks button down at the bottom of this video. Click on it. Buy me a cup of coffee. Don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new Acoustic Energy AE300s and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Mm -hmm.